Hello, I am Kelly DeMarco, and if you are new to my posts, my um, videos, I'm kind of using this space to share our cancer journey. My husband was diagnosed with a really rare form of metastatic bone cancer. It's called multiple myeloma. His version of multiple myeloma um, impacts about 0.5 of 1% of all people with multiple myeloma. So he's pretty special <laughs> in that uh, about 95 people on the whole planet are diagnosed with this particular genetic mutation um, or genetic markers, I should say, for multiple myeloma um, each year. So, um, I share this journey because, I don't know, for me, like talking about it is one of my ways of processing it. And I started writing about it early on and just thought, oh my gosh, there's so much to say. So many connections to, to draw so many facets of this that I feel moved to talk about that this just seemed like the most efficient way to get the message out there. And I think lately, just in the midst of my own busy life, uh, listening is often easier for me than reading sometimes. Um, so I figured I would create it in this form so that you could listen to. Um, and I'm, uh, you know, queen of multitasking right now. So I'm out for a walk, taking a break from my desk, enjoying the be beautiful weather. And um, just wanted to like take a moment to give you the backstory on my YouTube posts. And um, so you can, can know that information as you're following our journey. Um, Tim has been dealing with pain for a good while. Um, we bought a farm about five years ago and pain that had subsided for a long time seemed to come back. Um, and it seemed to be very much related to the chores and tasks he was doing. Um, it always showed up in places that really fit with the added chores and responsibilities of having a farm. Um, and our first, you know, three, six months into having a farm, it, it seemed to get worse. And then he started doing physical therapy and acupuncture and eventually chiropractic care and kind of a mishmash of different things to help address the different aches and pains his body was experiencing. Um, I personally have a history in working with patients who suffer from chronic pain um, as an occupational therapist and a body worker. So for me, you know, I I was just watching and just kind of providing support as I could, but it's one thing to be a therapist to someone who has pain. It's another thing to be a partner um, and spouse um, and mother of, of the children that you share in common. And so I think as he's tried to manage his symptoms more and more, I've distanced myself more and more. Um, because pain can really be consuming and can kind of pull your attention into the pain. And, and I rightfully so, you know, pain has a story of its own and it requires attention to, to like get to know it and understand it and get to the root of it. Um, for Tim, it, it's. It, uh, he kept thinking he was getting to the root of it and felt like he had some really huge breakthroughs this past year, um, especially in the past six months um, on a lot of different levels. And, you know, and then he had a, a sinus infection that was started like the end of March, early April. And 
you know, it was one of the sinus infections that just didn't go away. And finally he went to an ear, nose and throat specialist, um, urgent care, you know, got him put on different rounds of antibiotics. Um, after those didn't work, um, I, I was able to like take off my spouse and partner hat and put on my occupational therapist clinician hat and just look at him and just like, it just like really hit that what I was looking at was not just my partner in pain, but like something was seriously going on inside of his body. So in June, he, uh, I mean, he seriously all of a sudden looked like he was about a hundred years old and we, um, went back to the ENT. They said, we're going to have him finish out the course of antibiotics. I was like, well, that's not going to work. He's going to be on death's door. If we do that, he already is looking close to it. And I said, what do I need to do to get him in for a full lab workup? She said, I don't know. Just wait. Let's finish out the antibiotics. So then I called the, the um, urgent care. And they referred us back to um, the primary and got us set up for an appointment the next morning. And fortunately, the woman who saw him, she was just wonderful. And she spent a good hour with us and asked all kinds of questions and did a full lab workup and said, I will not leave here today until I see those results. Um, and she didn't tell us what she was suspecting, but when the results started to come back, she called and said, go home, pick up your husband and take him to the ER. They're waiting for him there and they're gonna do a full extensive lab workup. So that's what I did. Um, and in the meantime, I had taken him home after that lab workup in the morning and he looked worse and worse on the drive home and got out of the car and just landed on all fours and was vomiting up copious amounts of water. What we didn't know is that his kidneys were like rapidly shutting down on him and he could no longer process the fluids that were moving through his body and that was causing him to vomit. Um, and the smoldering multiple myeloma had uh, just blown up and was screaming for help and attention. So that was in June. And <laughs> I just sat like watching the ER docs and watching all of these people just like look at him and say, we've got you. We're, we're going to keep pushing to figure out exactly what's going on. All these specialists started coming in and I'm like, holy shit, like, what is happening? Like, I thought this was chronic pain. And then I, I knew, you know, like I knew something wasn't right, but this, um, You know, and like, it was this perfect storm of we had this global pandemic. And so over recent years, you know, it's like you try to avoid going to the doctor's office and getting exposed to things and you do all kinds of tests and you I do, we were doing as much as we could online. He was pursuing all of the treatments that had worked for him in the past that, you know, were giving him some relief, but not fixing the problem. And you know, what we've learned is that multiple myeloma can be in a smoldering phase for quite a long time, um, years and years. And then, you know, and then once it turns, it just like blows up. So at a point, at the point of diagnosis, he was diagnosed with stage three multiple myeloma with um, severe renal involvement. So, um, 
you know, in addition to being an occupational therapist and being a rehab manager and being a home care leader and, you know, wearing those hats, which make me really like, I feel comfortable and familiar inside of the healthcare and medical system. But, you know, when you put one, take one hat off and put on another one, like you see things totally differently. So I, I, I'm just aware, like, I was not seeing him through my healthcare lens. I was seeing him through the partner and spouse lens and just like holding on to a prayer that eventually his symptoms would go away and he would return to normal and everything would be good and our home would be great and we would be able to like chart the course that we had set out on, which was to, you know, have a farm and he was, he's, he's, you know, was already like growing our food and cooking our food and you know the next phase of that adventure was to really open our arms and our hearts and our doors and our table to welcome others and uh, we barely got there um you know and, and I that whole adventure was really like teaching our girls what it is to like raise your food and grow your food um and to talk with people about like respecting and valuing the earth beneath our feet and you know returning to a a diet that and a lifestyle that is slower and more mindful and so then to be like given the diagnosis of cancer just sort of like okay you know what was all that about and like how is that working um and for me I'm also a climate coach and you know I feel very drawn to help people figure out how to navigate the complexities of climate change and to find a form of activism and action that fits with like who you are and how you feel drawn to show up. And um, this diagnosis of cancer is like, you know, two of the, you know, kind of the, the hugely known, um, I guess catalyst for something like multiple myeloma to explode inside of somebody's body is exposure to toxic chemicals um, and you know I don't know if that's at the root of this for Timmy. He worked extensively on a golf course I think for four years during high school. He spent a lot of time with the sprays, spraying the vault, the course. And um, I, I don't know. I really don't know if that's, if that's connected. I'm kind of beginning some inquiry of my own to, to look into that further. But I'm just aware, like, our, our planet is suffering from... A form of cancer and it's windy you know we have like in his body like there's system breakdown and system collapse and when one system goes like it's really fast you know the timing is really quick when all of the other systems are affected and it's the same way on our planet, like all around, like as systems are impacted by climate change, like every other system is affected. And, you know, in the case of Timmy and his, you know, like we didn't really know how severe the problem was until we saw the numbers and we started looking like at the lab results and seeing like what's the normal range and where is he at and saw how far off he was from normal in a lot of different areas and it's like holy cow like internally 
his system's going down quickly. And for me, like being engaged and involved in climate work, like scientists have those numbers. You know, there's the International Governmental Panel on Climate, climate Change and they're putting out numbers every year. And I, I think people don't really know what those numbers mean or we choose to look the other way because it's not like really affecting us, you know, drastically. Like we can kind of numb out from it, turn the other way. Just, you know, it, it's like this thing that's like this growing hidden cancer that isn't, you know, we're not, it, like our hand isn't forced to deal with it. And for us with what was going on in Timmy's body, like we weren't forced to deal with it until, you know, as a whole family until it's like, oh my God, these numbers are horrible. And your body, like the whole body is responding fast and we have to take action quickly. And somehow inside of all of this, like I'm striving to find my voice and like the right tone to help um, like help connect the dots and help people see that like you know I think we feel like people are understanding cancer more and more because it's impacting more and more of us like the more I talk with people about cancer it's like everybody has been close to somebody or they've dealt with it themselves and I think that through the lens of cancer and our personal struggle to like deal with it and heal through it and you know like there's a whole waking up process to like how there's no one part of our body that's separate from the other part and I think there's huge lessons in that for the interconnectedness of every single living system on our global planet like on our planet and I think it behooves all of us to take some time to look at the numbers, to understand what those numbers mean, and to like get close to the problem. Um, I have to be close to the problem of cancer now because it's in my face every single day. And even though I'm not personally experiencing it, like I can't close the door on it because it's in my home. It's affecting my husband. It's affecting my daughters. It's affecting my whole immediate family because they're showing up to help. It's affecting my community because they're showing up to help. And I think within that, I feel like hopeful for the fact that if we all globally like wake up to the cancer that's affecting our planet, then we can begin to take action that is the kind of action that's needed and, and action is a huge, like, it's a hugely powerful form of addressing and dealing with, like, the eco-anxiety that has to be stirring in, in all of us. Because if you turn on the news, you see any part of our planet struggling um, because of this problem. So I don't have all the answers and as a climate coach and a health and wellness coach and a healthcare leader and a parent and a partner to someone struggling with cancer, like the best thing that I can do is to like, just be transparent about my process, about our journey, about the connections that I'm drawing and, um, provide insight to how we're navigating it and how we're taking steps, how I'm personally taking steps. Um, and I think each, you know, each and every one of us has that potential. And I think the more transparent we are about how we deal with hard things, we help those around us deal with hard things. 
and get through hard times. And I'd love to keep rose-colored glasses on and, and see the, the happy, good side of life all the time. But <laughs> I'm a realist and I'm, I'm smack in the middle of a personal crisis. And I woke up to the climate crisis many years ago because it was staring me straight in the face. And then I chose to like put myself in the middle of it in a lot of different ways. So I can't not see it. I can't not stay awake to it. And I just want to help people wake up and connect the dots and really spend some time pondering, like, what, what can I do? How can I help? Um, how can I be a part of the solution? Um, and some of us are called to act by reaching out to our next door neighbor and others are called to act by speaking up on broader platforms and others are called to act by, you know, there's any number of ways we can act. So hopefully this gives a little more context. Somebody reached out and asked if I could give a little bit more of the backstory. So this is the backstory and this is why I say the things that I do and spend time dialoguing in this space. Um, if you have questions or comments or feedback or anything that you would like to hear that would help you, let me know. Um, I've been invited to do a TEDx talk for women um, soon. And so comments that you have kind of give me uh, more food for thought as I pull that information together. So hopefully it's not too windy and you can hear the rest of this, but that's it for now. Thank you for listening. Bye.